future. The streets of the Venezuelan capital have been teeming with protesters calling for a recall referendum to remove President Nicolas Maduro. The largest recent rally called the taking of Caracas was held three weeks ago. And opposition forces have kept up the pressure on an already besieged socialist government. Basic goods have grown scarce, inflation is rampant, crime is chronic, and among the president's responses has been a clampdown on media critical of his government. A number of foreign reporters were denied access to the protests. Local journalists have been arrested, some questioned by intelligence agents. Officials have even banned drones from taking aerial images that capture the scale of the demonstrations. Much like his predecessor, Hugo Chavez, Maduro has been waging a war against the media since he took office in 2013. Chavez made changes on the broadcast side, both regulatory and related to ownership. Maduro has continued that trend with print outlets. However, this president is under more political pressure than Hugo Chavez ever was. At the end of last year, his party lost control of the National Assembly for the first time in almost two decades. So reforming, and to some extent controlling, the mainstream news media is no longer enough. Maduro has taken the power struggle online, calling for his supporters to turn to alternative media. However, with opposition outlets already ensconced on the web, social media has been telling a story that President Maduro doesn't want to hear. Our starting point this week is Caracas. President Nicolas Maduro marshalling the online troops for the political battle. However, the streets for Maduro are where the problem lies. The protest march on September 1st was the largest in two years. Venezuela is dependent on oil revenues. Its economy has nosedived along with the price per barrel. And the government seems to have no answer for the resulting shortages and political unrest. What it can do is try to control the narrative, more and more of which is being written online. The Venezuelan government controls today um, the largest segment of the media. Even though most of the media is in the hands of the private commercial companies, it's tightly controlled. It controls the newspapers through the supply of paper and access to hard currency. It controls the radio spectrum completely. And despite all this, it's still loose in the streets. He's calling out people to, uh, you know, a call to arms and take to the alternative media. And perhaps he's counting on a big outpouring of support on social media. And maybe that's something that he thinks that will help prop him up in the face of calls for him to step down due, due to the terrible crisis in Venezuela. But the fact is, a lot of the alternative media in Venezuela, that's one of the areas where there has been a new opening um, for independent media and media that's critical of the government. John Otis spoke to us from Bogota. He tried to get to Caracas to cover the story there for NPR, US-based public radio. But he says, for the first time in 20 years of covering Venezuela, he was turned back at the airport. When I got to the Caracas airport, myself along with uh, two other Colombian reporters and a French reporter, we were all stopped uh, at immigration. They wouldn't let us in because they said we didn't have the proper uh, accreditation. The problem is that when we apply for uh, foreign press credentials, often the Ministry of Communications simply doesn't even answer our uh, requests for press credentials. And this being journalism and breaking news happening, sometimes you just have to get up and go and jump on an airplane, and we don't know what we can do because uh, we, we try to do the right thing, but the government often doesn't answer our requests for press credentials. I've spoken with some of the people that were deported. The journalists were told by security officials they were coming to report on Venezuela as some part of a conspiracy. The whole process was blown out of proportion. There wasn't an official statement from a high-ranking Venezuelan authority explaining why these people were not allowed in. We managed to get a statement. Luis Jose Marcano is Venezuela's Minister of Information. Four years ago, he was a reporter on the state-owned VTV. Judging from his explanation on why those journalists were turned away, which is based on procedural arguments and paperwork, 
His transformation from reporter to government loyalist is complete. Because of the mayhem generated by the demonstrations on September 1st, there were media outlets that did not request the correct permission to enter the country or requested it outside the time frame needed by the government. Like any government, we reserve the right to apply mechanisms like this in the interest of preserving the country's stability. Media freedom advocates say the government has gone too far. More and more journalists trying to cover the protests complain about being harassed or expelled by police, soldiers or pro-government demonstrators. The government in Caracas does have grievances against the domestic news media, which are historical and legitimate. In 2002, Hugo Chavez was temporarily deposed in a coup that the plotters admitted would not have succeeded without the help of channels RCTV, Globovision and Venevision. Those channels, owned by conservatives hostile to Chavez and socialism, called Venezuelans onto the streets to bring down an elected government. Since then, the channels have either been taken off the air or taken over by owners the government approves of. When Hugo Chavez was briefly ousted in a coup, Chavez was just incensed by that, and that's one of the reasons he set out after the coup to create this huge pro-government media empire. But, you know, 10, 15 years later, the end result of that is the balance has been tipped in the opposite direction. Now, the major media in Venezuela is towing the government line. They're either docile or they kind of tow uh, a pro-government line. And Venezuelans on either side of the political divide do not trust media aligned with the other camp. Over the past few months, newspapers opposed to the Maduro government have had their offices attacked, including El Nacional in Caracas, where one day last month, journalists arrived to find their building covered in excrement. There have been attacks orchestrated by pro-government groups against certain independent media outlets. A journalist might be detained because they're covering an event with no explanation, even if they're eventually freed. They want to make examples of them so that the rest feel intimidated. A huge amount of journalists who either have been um, uh, detained, uh, have been harassed, made to resign, publicly exposed by the government, but also in the institutional size, they have changed the media landscape, you know. El Universal, which is the oldest and more established newspaper in Venezuela, was sold to a guy who nobody knows where the money came from. The whole media landscape is very well controlled by the government, and the journalists have been neutralized. So a lot of the very excellent journalism that is happening in Venezuela at the moment has been migrating to online. Which is why the Maduro team has issued its online call to arms, urging supporters to engage with the president and stand with him. Hostilities between the government in Caracas and the news media have been underway for a decade and a half, since the start of what socialists call their Bolivarian revolution. The economic conditions have worsened, the presidents have changed, as have the technologies, the platforms. But, the government says, the struggle for power in Venezuela continues. Since the beginning of the revolution in 1999, there has been a permanent, systematic attitude from the big media power groups against the Bolivarian revolution. First Hugo Chavez, and now Maduro. And what the Bolivarian revolution proposes is that in matters of communication, we don't live subject to the hegemony of economic powers, but that we have different possibilities. On the download now, the media battle in Venezuela. No, yo lo que he pensado realmente es que los medios de comunicación de Venezuela hay una libre expresión, tienen una libre expresión en todo el país, simplemente que debe haber regulaciones estrictas en cuanto a la regla de las comunicaciones en Venezuela, pero de que el presidente Maduro ha tomado estrictas regulaciones, no, yo creo que se ha mantenido una libertad de expresión normal, más bien amplia, debe haber más bien regulaciones que establezcan la comunicación veraz y oportuna en el país. Tú estás totalmente comunicado, no, no, no te encuentras como quien dice al día con la noticia, Sin 
sino que por lo menos el día de hoy yo puedo salir a la calle y en, la calle, en cualquier lugar puede haber una manifestación y yo sin darme cuenta porque simplemente no, no lo están pasando, no lo están informando por ningún lugar.